today I'm going to teach you how to do the splits on a slack line. So, there are a lot of ways you can do the splits on the slack line. I'm just going to do a demonstration first. types of ways to do splits again that I do and I like. So uh, with the first one I like to call this like squatting shin split. Tell me if you have a better name. My front foot that's going to be forward is parallel to the slack line, toes pointing forward. Now I'm going to squat and get my shin on the line most of my weight in my front foot, I'm going to press myself back, uh, just scooting along on my shin. This is an excellent place you can stop if you can't do a full split. Um, now I like to pop my right foot, front foot, heel off. Keep pressing back until you get into your full split and then you can lower down. So for this, I have the balls of my foot on the line on my front foot. I'm kind of sitting in this general area. I have the shin, my shin on the line in the back. So that's the crouching shin split. Uh, now that I'm down here, I'll show the drop knee split. Most people I come across do not like this version. I love it. It's one of my favorites. It's really good for high lining and slack line or long lines. Lines that are just a little uncomfortable, really big, you know. I find this one's really stable. So you start, start in a seated position, you get to a drop knee, get that foot behind you, get into your full drop. Adjust myself. I'm sitting on my right cheek inside of my sit bone. You'll find if you don't readjust yourself and put the slack line on one side or the other, you're just gonna crotch yourself and it really hurts. So inside of my sit bone, I'm going to lean back so that I can push my front foot forward. Another option, you can have the ball of your foot on the line. You can also just have your whole calf on the line like this if you want. I'll demonstrate both ways. So my calf's on the line. Lean forward. My weight is in my calf, right next to my sit bone on the inside, and then the top of my back foot. This is a place where it's nice to have some extra padding so you don't tear up your foot. So, got my foot on the line. I'm gonna press it back. Well, with leaning forward, you can extend your back leg and press it all the way back. This one's nice. It's really comfortable because you can just press with your whole leg and press with the top of your foot and even get your shin on the back if you want. Um, or you can get it to where the ball of your foot is on the line. So I'm gonna extend my leg forward. My heel is off the line, the ball of my, or yeah, the ball of my foot, the front pad and toes are pressing into the line. And I have the top of my back foot on. Now I'm going to pick myself up and lean forward. I'm pressing with that back foot and then I'm keeping the press. I extend it back. Ta-da! Hanging out your splits. Okay. For the third and final split, which is also arguably my favorite. Um, it's a very strong split. The other two 
true splits are closed hip splits, so they're true splits. This is not a true split, it's an open hip split. So for some of you, it might be easier if you don't have the forward split, you can just work on your open split on the slack line. Um, so, you're gonna start once again with your, your forward foot parallel with the line. I'm gonna, instead of having my shin or the top of my foot on the line, I'm gonna have the inside of my foot. That you want is like right here. It's like on this bone, on the arch, but you're not on the arch, you're on the side of your foot. So if you can cover that up with a sock or pants or leg warmers, it'll really make this a lot easier. It will make it slippier, which could be harder. That's okay. So, got this externally rotated foot. Bend that front knee. I'm just sliding it back the same way I do with the drop shin split. Um, now from here, once I get pretty far, I like to pop my heel up to the right again. Keeping both legs straight, I'm going to extend, lowering down. to do the splits and the one way that you should never do the splits because you'll cut your toe open a lot. Uh, thanks for watching. Follow my channel on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram. This is Lizasaurus slash Liz Thomas. Thanks for watching. suggest it to anybody. So the fourth way I'm not even gonna do but I'm gonna tell you about it because it's kind of funny. Uh, when I taught myself how to do splits on the slack line I would do this really deep lunge and my big toe, my back foot, my big toe is on the other side of the slack line. It's hooking the slack line to keep my balance. <laughs> And then I slide open. I don't know, maybe I will do it. I slide open with my big toe like that. Oh, I don't want to do it. <laughs> and then I flip my toes under my foot somehow. I don't know. And almost every single time I did the splits, I'd end up like rubbing the inside of my toe raw. And that was, the, that was the only way I knew how to do it because it's what I taught myself and learned. And it was so painful. I started taping my toe all the time so that I could do the splits because I would get this huge gash of a cut on the side of my toe, but I wasn't gonna slow down. I was gonna keep doing it, but I would just wrap my toe and tape it was awful. I don't suggest doing that. Don't cut your toe open all the time. That's like a very sensitive area. Anyways. <laughs>